Hello and welcome to today's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. Uh, I mean, it is Thursday when I'm recording this in the middle of a storm, St Storm Kieran. A very unpleasant storm it is too. Um, and I am, well, I'm pretty certain this video will never see the light of day. Um, because I'm going to be attempting a puzzle that lots of you have requested for the reason that you can't do it. Uh, and I've looked at the comments on Logic Masters Germany and it does seem that this is an absolute beast. It's by one of the most brilliant constructors um, making puzzles in the world, Jay Dyer. And she has created a puzzle called Crux. Um, and um, yeah, this is what I'm going to try and do in this video. I'm not going to spend long on the introduction because I, I fear that this one is, pr it's probably not suitable um, for a video. We've had some people, some of the people who've written in have said it's so that, you know, they have sort of spent 12 hours on it and things and haven't got it out. So even if I can solve it, the video might be so long that, um, that Storm Kieran knocks out the power before uh, <laughs> before the video finishes. Um, in, in the unlikely event this does become a video, I will say happy birthday to Jeet from your friend, I think it's Savi over there in India. Um, and Savi says that you're a genius Jeet and thanks you for getting her into cracking the cryptic. So well done. Um, and just a brief mention as well, we've got this brand new Sudoku hunt um, in the form of a short story from Dimono available on Patreon. It came out yesterday. Um, so definitely check that out. Um, and ah, I don't think there's anything else to mention. Let, let's, let's just read the rules of this and then we can turn the webcam off quietly and move, and move swiftly on. <laughs> yeah. Right, so these are the rules. Normal Sudoku rules apply. So we've got to put digits one to nine once each and every row, column and three by three box of that. That, that is clear. Then we have to divide the grid entirely into 15 clumps, which are none overlapping orthogonally connected groups of cells, each of which contains no repeated digits and sums to 15. Okay, so imagine... Hmm. Yeah, okay, so I've just, I've already realized something. I was going to say, imagine these cells sum to 15. Um, then they could be clumped and that is true, but it doesn't mean they have to be clumped because there could be lots of ways of organizing the grid, I suppose. And what we've got to find is a way that that can fill the whole grid with 15 clumps. Here comes the wind again. <laughs> um, um, anyway, orthogonal connections mean, means that that is not a clump, for example, because this cell is not orthogonally connected to this two by two. So that's the sort of thing we can rule out. Orthogonally connected means shares an edge. Um, rather than a corner. <laughs> um, an arrow in a grid indicates that exactly n 15 clumps can be seen in the direction of the arrow where n is the digit in the arrow's cell. The arrow's cell is not, sorry, the arrow's cell is not counted, though that cell's clump may be counted if other cells in it are visible in that direction. Good grief. Right, so um, so imagine that, let's just draw some, imagine these are all different clumps. So I'm just going to try and work out what that means, what this number would be in this, in this instance. Um, two arrows in the same cell are counted as independent clues. Okay, I'll come back to that in a minute. I think I understand what that means. So this number is uh, is is the count of the clumps seen, but doesn't count. It, well, it doesn't count its own cell, but it does. You can count its own clump. So one, two, three, four, five. That would be a five, I think. It's not fog of war, so we can we can happily enter digits. Um, okay. That's well, that seems fine, doesn't it? And in fact, if these squares were a different clump, this would still be five. What about if that square was actually orange? That would still be five because it's still, it's still, it's still basically you just look to the, in this, for this clue, you look to the right of the clue and you count the clumps. My phone is buzzing, that's fine. Um, 
Okay, I sort of understand that. Oh, and then there was another rule. Two arrows in the same cell are counted as independent clues. So this clue, I think what that's saying is, imagine this was a three. If that's a three, then it's not saying there are three clumps all together in all of those cells. It's saying there's three clumps up here and three clumps that way. I think that's what that's saying. Um, do have a go the way just be warned I mean, this is apparently an absolute beast um, but brilliant the people who have solved it are eulogistic <laughs> um, the, the way to play is to click the link under the video as usual but now I get to play let's get cracking and the good thing about these arrows about sudokus where there are arrows pointing at borders is that for example this square here one two three four that cannot be higher than four can it because there could be four clumps if these were if each cell was in a different clump that could be a four but it can't be more than four so that's got to be one two three or four i suppose there's no problem oh well there is there, i can instantly rule out one surely uh, and the reason i can rule out one is not because of this direction but it's because of this direction you can't have one clump that would imply all of those squares were in the same clump and eight different sudoku digits would add up to at least 36 so that's not a one i'm not even sure it can be a two actually uh if it was two no it can't be two by the secret <laughs> i didn't think i was going to be starting on the secret in this puzzle but i will share the secret um i only share it with my favorite people but if you're watching this video you're definitely one of them um the secret is that the complete column of a sudoku a complete row or a complete box of the Sudoku contains the digits 1 to 9 once each. And the digits 1 to 9 once each sum to 45. That's the secret. Don't tell, don't tell anybody. But that is the secret. So if this was a 2, then I'm saying that there are two clumps down here that have to add up to 43, i.e. 45 minus 2. And however I divide them up, and even if they take no cells at all from anywhere else, I can't, obviously I can't divide those into two lots of 15, can I? That's going to be at least, well, two lots of 15 is 30, it's not 43. So in fact, we have got a tiny deduction here. Let's go back to that cell. That's not two. I'm gonna check three actually, because three is, hmm. Three is actually possible, I think. If it was three, let's just divide it into three pieces. Now, what we're saying now is that these squares add up to 42. If this is, let's actually put three in. If this is four, three, this is 42. So if that was 15 and that was 15, that would be 12. Hmm. I can't immediately rule that out. There might be a technical reason, but I don't know what it is as to why that's impossible. So, ah, that one's better. That one is one or two, look. That can, it's only seeing two cells. That one is one, two, or three. That one's a bit further away. That one is... That one is the same as that one, look. Those two, are the, they have the same geometric property. They've got, they're counting four cells towards the row one column one corner but they've got this you know they're looking at a whole row or column as well just like that one so this one is i think also three or four this one is one or two right here we go we've got a one two pair in column seven uh no um well i mean maybe it is worth doing hang on so this square is it can't be one or two now because it sees a one two pair so it's three, four, five, or six, I think. I mean, it's, you see, the thing, I, the thing I'm not sure about is, again, I'm just wondering whether there's something I should be appreciating. If that's six, obviously these six cells are all in different clumps. But I don't really see why that's impossible. I mean, the clumps can take a variety of shapes. I don't know. I, mm. I 
that's oh okay that's one two three or four it can't be one again it's looking across here it can't be two again ah so i've got a three four pair in this row so i've got a one two pair here and a three four pair here that well that i was about to say that can't be it can't be nine can it because there are only eight cells above it so that's one two three four five six seven or eight no i'm not pencil marking that that one well i'm gonna i'm going to put two three or four in i i know it can't be one because that would imply all these are in the same clump if it's two depends what value that is as to whether that's possible i don't know that it is no it's never possible even if that's nine which it can't be because it's got an arrow in it in fact what's this this is one two three or four so if this was two and this was four which is the most it could be We'd have six here, which means these squares have to be in two clumps that sum to a minimum of two sort of six or well, 45 minus six, which is 39. And you can't divide that up so that any what well, both clumps are, are 15 or less. Um, and that's then that's also even assuming that the clumps stay entirely in their columns. So that that's that is not two. So there's a three four pair here and a three four pair here. And now this square is not three or four by Sudoku. So this is one or two. So that's telling us that. So if that was one clump. I think I've done. Have I done a clump puzzle or watched Mark do a clumps puzzle? But I don't think it was with 15s. I want to say it was with 10s. And I want to say it was by... It was by Zeta Math. But I might be wrong. Because I was... Th I don't know why, but I was thinking, oh, if that was 1, 2, 3, 4, that would be problematic. But I actually don't think it is at all. I think 15 gives us a lot more flexibility. Oh. oh, well, this has to be at least that, probably more than that. I mean, is that actually, could it be the same? No, it, it's going to see all the clumps there. And there's got to be some extra clumps here. <laughs> well, some extra clumps there, I suppose, to be technically correct. Hmm. I don't again I don't think the pressure is on that cell. Uh I would, mm. Ah, okay. Maybe maybe these two clues and how they interact on this box. I'm just going to play around with this for a moment. If that's a four, that's saying these four cells are all in different clumps. So let's go to colouring. If these are all different clumps, obviously we can't write 15 into any one of those cells. So each one of these clumps would fill form a sort of form a sort of domino. I'm just going to think about that one. Does that have to do that, or can it go there? No, it can go there, can't it? That's ah, that's rotten. Ah, all right. Okay, so these are different. That feels interesting. Well, or to put it, oh, I think no, I think it is literally that. If this square is four. This square cannot be four. Actually, it might. It might not be. It's certainly true to say if this is four, this can't be four. Because if this if this is also four, these two cells wouldn't be in the same clump, and yet they must be in the same clump because of this clue. So if this is four, this is three, and this is four, and if this is four, can that actually? Well, so hang on. If this is four, that is three. And we're saying that is four. 
But what if this is 3? Then we're saying this is 4. If this is... So can both of those be 4, I suppose, is the, is the question we need to ask now. So I have no idea. Let's see. Um, if both of these... If this is 4... And this, no, that doesn't work either. It's actually it's actually straightforward, isn't it? Yeah, these two have to be in different shapes. Right, sorry, that was obvious and I just didn't, didn't really appreciate it. So, right, so what that means is... What that means is that this is always the same as this. Right, okay. That's right, isn't it? Because whatever this is, this isn't. And therefore, this, these two are the same. And I don't know whether this is four or not yet. So these are the same, which means those are the same. And right what about this one two pair again then so if this was a two then that would be in its own clump this would be in a different clump i don't like the way i mean it's 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 not jay's fault but it's a consequence of the rules that this can spill into this one so, because it makes it makes the clue less powerful than you sort of hope it will be you sort of hope that if that's a two it's causing at least two dominoes but it's i don't think it is it's just causing that to be different to this but you don't know where that one goes and therefore you I don't know. I don't think that actually does very much. So. I want to say it's something to do with this 3-4 pattern we've got across the middle. But I don't really understand let's actually just think about it again so if that was four and that was three yeah there's still going to be a lot of pressure here isn't there so let's let's just let's just play this around because it, well it's it is slightly different here because this one isn't on the boundary but but let's just keep playing around with this and see if we can understand something i don't, I don't want to use green i use gray so and this oh i've got to remember purple and gray might be the same but this three is capping this one out, isn't it? The, and it? Sorry, it's capping this one out. This one can't go into this square or this can't see three clumps. So that is a new color. Oh, I've just had a horrible thought. That's a new color. That's a new color. I'll make it black. But now this one isn't 15 on its own. So it comes out here. But the horrible thought I've had is could yellow be orange? If yellow isn't orange, then yellow and red are together adding up to 30, and they would have to be a 6, 7, 8, 9 quadruple. And these squares would be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, which means actually, I've had another thought, which is if orange is not yellow, orange could join with blue and make a clump that looked like that. But it, again, this is difficult because it doesn't have to. It could do, but it could equally come this way and find cells that make 15. Or it could go there and then there. And this one could come out here. Yeah, it could come out here because grey could be the same as purple. Okay, I'm just going to try that same exercise down here just to just to think about i don't think there's going to be a, enough of a difference but i just want to check what this looks like so we know it's going to look something like this and this is a three so that caps this one off so this is a clump 
Let's make that, I don't know what color to make this. Uh, let's make that purple. Um, so this one, it depends whether this one comes out further or not. It's less constrained. Oh, well, this has to be different. Right, let's make that gray for a moment. I'm not saying it's the same as that, but it's just not the same as this. Yeah, this is looser, isn't it? It doesn't feel quite as powerful because this one isn't on the boundary. So that could fence red in and then that would give us a six seven eight nine quadruple i suppose oh i suppose if that was a very high digit there'd be a lot of clumps in this column but why why shouldn't there be a lot of clumps in this column God. the answer is i don't know Um, okay, I'm not sure. Sorry, let's let's get rid of some coloring. <laughs> um, I can leave the I can leave the purple and the the green there. I can't leave these here because I don't know if they're accurate or not. I do know these these are threes and fours, and. So I know one of them is a three and one of them is a four. One of these is a three, one of these is a four. So the one that's a three is seeing, well, it's seeing very few clumps. Hang on. Ah, I know what it's going to be. I know what it's going to be. It's, it's going to be that, well, these cells, yes, I see. I'm sorry, I'm being slow. But th these cells see the same it, they both see those cells, don't they? Those cells are common, commonly count. However many clumps are in blue, they're seen by both of these clues. So what that means, in order that these see different numbers of clumps, the, the one of these, that's, let's make that one four. If this is four and this is three, this one, so in blue, there cannot be more than three. And therefore, well, not only that, in blue, there cannot be more than three, but in blue, including the four, there cannot be more than three. So in fact, whatever this cell's clump is, the four belongs to it. And the corollary of that is in this direction, because the blues are all seen and there aren't more than three clumps in blue, this must, oh, I don't know, uh, let's use the pen tool. There must be a boundary there between clumps so that this four sees an extra clump. So I don't really know how to show this, but, the, and the problem is this is, uh, we don't know. I don't know which one of these is four and which one of these is three. But what we can say is that whichever side the four is on, it joins to the cell next to it in the row, which might be this cell to this cell or this cell to this cell, to make sure that the three clue isn't broken. And whichever side the three is on, it lives on its own. It's lonely. The three is a lonely, a lonely cell that needs to get more clumpage. From elsewhere. Now. What does that mean? Um, I don't know is the short answer. I'm just trying, I'm actually trying to deal with another thought that I've had, which I, I'm not immediately sure matters very much, but I'm just thinking about it for a moment. I'm wondering if this four clue 
we know it takes this square. I don't. I don't think. I'm. Wa I'm wondering if either of these clues could be in clumps that come back into the middle row. Is actually what I'm thinking about. I don't think this one can. So imagine that clump did that. No, that can't work, can it? Because because this clue, you can't repeat a digit in a clump, can you? I th I'm sure I read that. Yeah, you can't repeat a digit in a clump. So, so the maximum length of a clump anywhere in this puzzle is five cells because the triangular number for five is 15. One plus two plus three plus four plus five. So if you had a six length clump, there would be no way to keep the digits down. Given you can't repeat a digit, you couldn't, you couldn't keep the digits down to only 15. So you could have a length five clump maximum. So you could have a u-pentominode clump. But if you had a U'd pen hominode clump, this cell can't take any more cells in this row. So all of these squares, well, actually, you could have another U pen hominode there, I suppose. Oh, no, that would work. Or would it? No, that wouldn't work for a very technical reason. Again, this would be a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That would be a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And there'd be nowhere in this box to put the digits 6, 7, 8, 9, apart from that square, which is clearly nonsense. So you can't overlap you pentominoes. But I suddenly thought you could, because those squares, obviously those four different digits, well, although could they actually add up to only 15 in a row where they couldn't use 3 and 4? Uh, yeah, they could. They could be one, two, four. Oh, no, they couldn't be one and two. So maybe not in this particular row, but then maybe they could in that column, although hmm, not, I'm not sure, actually. Anyway, it's moot. It's moot. I, I don't think... I don't think you can come back into this row. Um... If, if this was four, we know this would be four. I'm just going to put this in just so I can stare at it in isolation. And I know that the same thing is true here, don't I? Yes. So in this column, this would be fenced off from everything beneath it. Oh, is that? Mm, yeah, that's true. That's true because this segment here, let's make that orange in fact, this orange segment can't include more than three clumps because otherwise this clue is broken. In fact, here it's interesting. Those, If this was the case, these three digits would all have to be in the same clump because otherwise, if they weren't, this would see... Well, for this to see four clumps, that's why we need this line beneath the three, because this has to be an extra clump compared to what's in orange. So we know that we know there must be three clump. Oh, sorry, we know. Yeah, we know there must be three clumps already seen in the orange, because otherwise the four clue couldn't work. So there are three clumps here. But there can't be more than three clumps in the column. So actually, this square would join up with all those three. All of those three would be in the same clump. It's quite interesting actually, isn't it? It, it is quite interesting. There's definitely something about the way these threes and fours interact that is far more restrictive than you first realise or first consider. But the problem is that this could all be the other way round and Goodness only knows what that does to things. And the other problem is that I don't actually, I don't actually know why it matters. The only other thought I'm having as I say that is that the three Let's actually make that square blue as well, because it seemed obviously included in blue. So there are three clumps. In 
in row five that sum up to at least no okay how how about this what i'm about to say is this true it might well not be so that's why i'm just pausing before i'm about to say this what is the most the maximum number of cells that the clumps pointed at by this clue can take in the grid that's the question i'm sort of thinking about and the reason i'm thinking about that is that somehow these that i mean in this example actually this is blue isn't it that might be a better way of thinking about it in this example these two are both orange so whatever we do here we've got to bear in mind we might have to switch this round but let's just start from here and think about it now the blue cells sum to well they do sum to 42 by the secret they just do and they are divided into three clumps so even if i had two clumps that were completely full in this row so say that say i had two 15 clumps 15 clump there and then a 15 clump there this final clump would still have to add up to 12 and then we can't repeat a digit in that final clump so the maximum number of squares that you could add on to all of the clumps in this in this row would be if you added a one two pair onto this clump so imagine that was an eight and we added a one two pair into this clump it could be there there it could be vertical but you can't add more than two cells so these eight cells are part of clumps oh my phone is going nuts again um it's all right nothing urgent um these eight cells are part of three clumps and they must have more than eight cells because they don't add up to 45 they need to add up to something that's zero mod 15 i.e when we divide all of the digits in the three clumps well the three clumps must add up to 45 the digits in them must add up to 45 because each clump is 15 so and we've got 42 so so the number of clumps consumed by the blue cells is 9 or 10 depending depending on whether the oh, i had another thought yeah no that's right actually because the other thought i had isn't doesn't work right because i suddenly thought what if you had three 14 clumps in this row well that that each of those 14 clumps would need a one to complete it and that one would have to be next to the next to this row and that will put three ones in two rows of the puzzle so this can't be three 14 clumps adding to 42 so it's at least one 15 clump and then at least one 15 clump and then 27 in the other two clumps which could be 15 and 12 or 14 and 13 only and if it was 14 and 13 you'd have to add a one to the clump and then a two to the other clump because you couldn't add two ones to the other clump yeah so okay so there are either nine or ten cells all together in the blue clump in the blue clumps and there's not much not many well i suppose this is like this is the total count isn't it of the cells outside yeah that's interesting actually 
So this cell acts as the the balancing figure in the sense that whatever goes in blue needs that many more contributed to the total of blue in order to get to something that is uh, 0 mod 15. Right. I am sorry, I haven't got a clue what that means. Um, and it strikes me it's going to be a lot more complex. Well, yeah, well, this is the problem. This is the problem. Okay. Mm. Well, in this particular example, I think it is actually really complicated. Um, because everything I've just said about blue must be true for orange as well. But it's only true in this example where we have the threes in these positions. If the threes were in these positions here, I'm not sure it works the same way because this digit affects the count in this column. But but where it is in this direction and the threes are here, it is true to say orange has to also sum to 42. And it is true to say that Therefore, this is split up into big clumps. We can add three as a, at a maximum to the orange. So either that's going to be a three sticking out into, you know, one of these squares somewhere to correct a 12 count that's sitting in orange somewhere. Which could be anywhere. I mean, it could be those three add up to 12. And then put a three here, add it to this clump, and it would get to 15. And then these would add up to 30. The only thing I'm slightly confused, well, I'm not slightly confused about here is this square. Because that square... Yeah, oh, but I don't know if this is generalized or not. Maybe I've got to think about it from that direction. Whatever. What I'm trying to think about is can this square be part of a 15 clump? That's what I'm trying to think about. In <laughs> no, I mean I know it's part of a, uh, I know it's part of a fifteen clump. Can it be part of a fifteen clump in this direction only? So part of a say a, either a two cell or a three cell sequence that adds to fifteen. And the reason I think that's difficult, I don't think that can be right. I'm not sure whether it's generalizable. In this situation, I don't think it's right. So imagine this was a clump. This, these red ones were a clump, and they added up to 15. Then, in this direction, yeah, it doesn't work. It's very clear it doesn't work, actually, now I think about it. Even if this was as big as it could be, which would be a nine, in this direction now, there's meant to be three clumps that sum to 42. And therefore, the minimum size of a clump, if you had two 15 clumps, that, that would give you the least remainder, which would be 12, for the, for the third clump. But if, this, if, this is, if that is a clump, this is only nine. So the other cells in this column would have to add up to 33. 
and therefore one of them would be at least one of them would be greater than 15. But is that true? And this is going to get really complicated. Is that true if we switch these round? I don't know is the answer. I'm going to have to look at that. So if we switch this round, all the colouring changes. Uh, yeah, it really all, it just all changes. The whole thing becomes more complicated, I think. And the reason it becomes more complicated is it's still true that the, to say the threes have to be fenced off because we, you do have all this commonality of areas. And it's still true to say the fours have to be part of the cell beneath them. Otherwise, the three count couldn't be couldn't be correct. But actually, everything everything we've said for the row, I think, is also still correct. It's this square that feels horrible to me. I, I feel like it's affected the count in this column. Uh, why is that an eight? Was that an eight? Because I can't think how I ever got an eight in the grid. I don't think I had any digits I actually had earned in the grid. I don't know why that was an eight. I'm taking it out. Um, so in this row, if that is a clump that adds to 15, is this still broken? And the answer might be no. So can you have a one cell clump? in this direction if this is a three if this is a three and we max this out at two that's five which means these have to add up to 40 so if this didn't take no it doesn't it doesn't work only just though it's still good this logic is still good right so this cell can't be or, or, or yeah this 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 cell it's really complicated i hope i hope everyone's following me but i don't think this can be part of a horizontal clump only if you see what i mean in, in the sense that the, it's part of a sequence in this row that adds to 15 and the reason is even if i make this as big as i can these squares still have to add up to at least 40. so if this was nine that would tell us that these squares, which must be two clumps, because we're saying this is one clump and it is not spilling out of the column in column five, these cells would have to add up to at least 31. And therefore one of them is bigger than 15 and that cannot work. Now, So that means that this square horizontally <sighs> Sorry, I realize I've stopped speaking. That's because I'm 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 quite unsure. I'm I'm not, I don't feel I quite grasp what that means. I think this square is under some sort of pressure, but I don't know. I'm not sure exactly what I've just proved there. I've proved that. I've certainly proved this is not part of a 15 going this way. So it's part of, say, let's say a 13 going this way. Let's say those two added up to 13. What are we then saying? We're still saying, aren't we, that this square has to take, it has to have something vertical. It has to in this column. This square, it cannot, we said its clump couldn't be simply horizontal because this, this, wherever the three is, it's broken. If this is purely horizontal, this cell here. So it has some verticality.
And the same thing is obvious, it's the same thing is more clearly true, I'm now realising, in the column, in the sense if I try and make those a 15 clump, then again that could be a 9 maximum, but in this row I've got a bigger problem because I've got 42 to deal with, and having a 9 with boundaries like this is going to break it because I'm going to have 33 in these squares or if the three and the four were the other way around 30 you know it's, it's a symmetrical problem so okay so what we're actually proving here let me get rid of these lines is that the clump that belongs to this square this one's clump goes up a bit and across a bit in box five Okay, well, that's great. <laughs> How is that helpful? Um, okay. Mm. <laughs> ah, okay. I almost wanted to allege that it was a nine then, that this square had to be a nine. That might be true, actually, if this wasn't the arrangement. If the threes were at the top, if the threes were there and there, I think it would be true. Let me just show you that because that that feels right to me. I'm not sure about this, but I'm just going to check. I'm just going to have a look at it, think about it. If you're in this situation where you get to draw those lines, now they add to 42 and these add to 42. And we know there is spillage related to this square in the sense it has to have some verticality and it has to have some horizontality going through it but the maximum yeah but the maximum oh this is very complicated but but you can think about it in terms of how much can you add as a maximum to the clumps in this column how, how much in total can you add? Now, you know these squares add to 42, and you know, you, you know there are three clumps. So you can only ever add that much is worth of digits to any clump that is incomplete. And therefore, this cell, which we know is incomplete in the column because it can't be part of a 15, could have a maximum of three added to it from elsewhere wherever wherever that three was but the same logic applies in the row and therefore if you can only add a maximum of three outside of the row and three outside of the column to this square but it needs to be part of a 15 is it correct to say that's a nine actually i'm not sure now I'm not sure because I'm thinking, you know, if it took two cells here. No, that. And now I think it. Now I think it is true again, <laughs> because by whatever it takes horizontally, this is weird. It's absolutely weird, but whatever it takes horizontally in this direction. We, yeah, let's just look at this specific example. Whatever it takes here. We know this square is contributing to this total, if you like, because we know those add to 42. So this must be part of the extra three that we're trying to allocate to the clumps that fall, fall down here. So how could that be ever bigger than three? 
Well, it can't be bigger than three. If it was four, then the clumps in this column add to 42 plus four, which is 46, and that's never possible. Three clumps cannot add up to 46. So that can be a map. That can't even be three, though. Oh, let's forget about that. I don't understand what that means. But anyway, yeah, maybe, maybe the point is, oh, this is weird, actually. Um, I was, what I was going to do was then extend that again and say, well, these could add up to three and be a one, two pair, but that would actually break that. So that, that, that can't work either. Um, now might be proving the puzzle's broken on this line of thinking. Uh, but anyway, in this instance, these two squares would have to add up to that, wouldn't they? They can't add up to more than that. But the same logic applies in the column. I know that there's got to be some verticality to whatever this clump is. Let's give it some verticality. And now that has to contribute to this. So the maximum number of verticalities and horizontal horizontalities you can add to this cell ever is six. It's three plus three. And therefore that has to be nine. But here is the problem. Here is the problem with this line of reasoning. I have I've simplified this by putting the threes in these two positions. I don't think this works if we switch it round. So if we go back to where we were, now that was with this being three and this being three, I think, and these being fours, you can see, well, I think the maths is gonna change. That's the problem because now we worked out this still had to have horizontality and verticality. Um, so let's just give it a little bit of that. Now, how does that maths change? In the, in the row, it doesn't change. This cell cannot add up to more than three because these add up to 42 and there's three clumps in them. So I can add a maximum of three outside outside of this row to any individual clump. So this square couldn't be more than three for the same reasons. But in the column, it's, it's very different. In the column, it's very different because now in the column, these do not add up to 42 anymore. They definitely don't because this square is not zero. These, these, the column adds up to either 41 or 40, depending on whether this is a 1 or a 2. And therefore, these effectively become, I don't know, outies might be the way to think about them. So this square now could be as high as 5. Or you could have two cells out, out here that could be as high as, that could add up to 5. The, um, the, the only thing that I'm just mulling over there, though, that's really interesting to me, and I am a strange man in terms of what I find interesting, that is true. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to be able to articulate this very clear, cleanly either, but the only thing I'm now worried worried about, I, I am actually worried about this because I can't actually see how to do it. But the thing I'm worried about is that it it's simply not acceptable for this square to be a three. It's the most it can be because of this. But I can't put three here because there's definitely a three in the column because there's a three, four pair. So that And I can't have two cells adding up to. Well, I can't have two cells adding up to three in the column because I can't put a one, two pair in. But what I'm thinking now is could I do that? So these two squares 
would be they're both outside of this row and if this was a one two oh if this was a one two pair then they would add up to three goodness me okay that doesn't work for a very peculiar reason this is so complicated by the way this is so complicated uh, but in this version of events things don't work because um, I've got to allocate a value to this square and that square which don't forget cannot be bigger than the outies in this in this column which add up to a maximum of five so I can't put anything other than one two three four or five in this square but it sees one two three and four so it would be a five and if that's a five ah is that is that what it is is this then Let me just mull this, sorry. <laughs> I just want to think about this. If, if this was a 5, that obviously can't be in. That has to be a 2. But that's the only way I can get to outies of 5 in the column. We've now maxed out all of our outies and innies, or however you want to describe it, with 8. So this would be a 7. So I don't, I really don't think this can be any lower than seven, this middle digit. For what that's worth, which might not be very much, but that would now be a one, that would be a two in this complicated world that we're now living in. That would be a three. All of those would be forced. I'm not by any manner or means saying this is the only possibility. I'm just trying to understand what what sort of what limits are being placed on this square. And the answer is quite a lot of limits, I think. This would have then it would have to be divided into 15s in the rest of it. So this would have to be a six nine pair and this would have to be the other digits eight one two four that would have to be eight this would have to be a one or a two this would uh, yeah, that would have to be a one, I think, because these would all be part of the same region. It would be very forcing if this was correct. But. But. It's quite interesting. It's very forcing on the six nine pairs having a seven in the middle because this would have to be a domino as well. Oh, hang on. Hang on, I've got a problem here. Hang on, what have I done wrong here? I've just had another horrible thought that means I can't make this work. Oh, this is so weird. This doesn't work, but I don't, I can't, I can't, I'm not going to be able to, oh, Simon. The reason this doesn't work is nothing like those complicated shenanigans I was just going into. But the reason this doesn't work is that in this column, I can't have... I've got a three here and a two here, which is the most I could ever put in, which means that the, these squares add up to 40. And therefore, vertically, the minimum clump size I could put in one region, the minimum would be a 10, and then the other two would have to add up to 15 each. I couldn't have less than 10, and I haven't got 10 here. I can't extend it. 
This could never have been lower. Oh, this is this is some it's something to do with oh, this is oh no this this is this is it right well it's not it because I don't understand it but this is why the puzzle is called crux because it's crux is a cross and that's what exactly what we're trying to figure out here is how this cross works how long have I had an I've had an hour I've had an hour oh Simon why is your brain so poor. What did we work out? We worked out that if, if it was, if this was three and this was three, then this had to be nine because we had 42. We could only have three outies contributed vertically and horizontally. So we couldn't have this being less than nine. hang on hang on hang on i'm going to go back to that now so i'm sort of starting to feel like i'm i'm getting a little bit more au fait with how this works um, now what was it we were going to go fours here and whatever that is down there which is less relevant now but but we then know we get that and that don't we we know those are a region and those are in part of the same region. Now, I just want to think about this again, because I think what we proved is this had to be nine, because we know that this has to have some horizontality and verticality, and we know we can't add more than three to it. So, and in this instance, the weird thing, the weird thing about this is that you, we have to add something vertically in one of these places at least and we have to add something horizontally but in each instance we can't add the digit three as a as a sort of because three is not available to go in any of these cells so the maximum digit we can actually put in given we can't have any digit higher than three in either direction is a one or a two but the moment we do that we know we have to add a one or a two horizontally and a one or a two vertically. We have to do that. That's the only way we've got any latitude at all in growing this, this clump. But what on earth do we do now? We are broken. Houston. We are broken. This doesn't work. This is actually wrong. So now I'm going to get digits and this might be the way into the puzzle. Because the reason we're broken is, and it wouldn't have mattered if I put the ones and twos there. It doesn't matter how you arrange the ones and the twos. You get that pattern or some version of it, but we haven't reached 15 yet. So the only way we can grow, we're on 12, aren't we? Ah. Uh, <laughs> we're zug swanged. It's the most, it's incredible. We're zug swanged. And the, re the reason is incre it's incredibly constrained. And the only way I can explain this, and this is not going to be the most brilliant explanation I've ever given on Cracking the Cryptic, but I, but I think hopefully it's you'll see it's true, is... We now have introduced a measure of verticality and horizontality, eating in to our ability, uh, eating into our three allocations on each side. So we can't just add three on now in that position, say, say that's a red three, because now from a horizontal perspective, I've added on more than three to the clump in the middle. And I can't add more than three on. These add up to 42 already. So I can't add, I cannot do that. It's the same, it's exactly the same if I try and do it here. That this is just, I'm only allowed to add on a maximum of three. So I can't make this red and make it three. It won't work. I've already added on a one or a two. So the only things I can add on now in any direction we like 
is ones and twos. Where exactly am I doing that? Clearly I can't add on any more ones and twos in box five. I've already put one and two in. And I can't add on ones and twos here. This might be why this is here, you know. You can, you can see, it, you just can't. Well, actually, hmm, let me just double check that I think that's true. What about if I'd gone this way? And I'd added that one on as well. Then from this perspective, I could have only added on one and two. I mean, if, if this really is how you're meant to do this, it's, it's, it's utter genius from Jay. But this is so difficult to understand for me. This doesn't work. Not because of this one, which is actually working, bizarrely enough. This There's three lots of outies available. We've added on three. That's fine. And we haven't broken this row somehow. But it, it breaks here. Because I'm now, I'm now needing to add on whatever this isn't, a one or a two. And I've got nowhere to put it that's orthogonally adjacent. I can't put it anywhere in box five. I can't put it here because I've got a one, two pair in the column. I can't, eat, I, I mean, I didn't even see this, but I can't put it in these two squares because of this. If this is how I'm meant to think about this, this might be the most complicated breaking I've ever seen on a Sudoku. It's absolutely extraordinary. There's just nowhere to put the one and two that you need in an orthogonally connected area. These are all out of bounds because of the one two pair, so they can't go in. I can't put it here. I can't put it here because there's a one two pair in the column once you, you introduce verticality. And I can't put it here because of this. But it needs to be outside of this row and it needs to connect to this. And there's nowhere to put it, so it doesn't work. Uh, and that is just about the most complicated thing I've ever seen in my life. Uh, no, I mean, that's not quite true, but it certainly is, it is certainly, um, I think, valid. Now, that's huge because we have effectively, we knew these two squares were the same, and we've now proved they are not three. So we now know that these are four. We know that these are three. And that means that's not three. Um, it means that we can actually legitimately place some of these barriers to entry. There must be a barrier here. There must be a barrier here. There, there's no barrier there. There's no barrier there. This is a four, which means we can barrier. Oh, actually, I'm not going to be able to. See. Oh, look, when I do that, it looks like the grid's moving. Is that just my eyesight? don't know it looked like the grid was moving there those four barriers are all drawn um yeah maybe i use red because I, I couldn't i couldn't see that bl that black line i wanted to draw there so there that's where we are i think and we still think there's pressure on this digit but i don't think it's forced to be nine anymore i think it could be seven based off that thing that we did before um so that's all part of one clump. Let's give that its own colour. That's a clump. Well, it might come out here. This is a clump. Make that orange. This is a clump. We'll make that green. And this is a three. So this clump ends. There we go. We've got a, we actually got a clump. That is actually, a, that's our first clump identified. Now there's a line there. Uh, so... The, um, so I don't know actually whether to make this. Oh, I'm going to do that. I'm not sure whether I should be using colours now actually. Maybe it's actually more sensible not to. Because I don't want I don't want my brain not to consider that those could join up. So maybe I'm better doing that and making that not coloured. I'm not sure. I'm just not sure. I don't know really what I'm meant to be doing here. So let's go like that. And the problem is that could join to that. So we don't know anything about this square, I think. 
Uh, no, I can't draw that in because this could join. This one could join to that. Ah, but this one has exactly the same profile. I can draw all of those lines in. That, that, and that are all clumps. This three, that must be. Uh, yeah, so that's a clump. We found another clump down in this in this this area of the woods. That line is valid because I've got to have a three, but we don't know whether that joins up. Okay, so where are we now? The answer is, I'm not sure exactly. I think I'm going to have to think about this square again. But now with at least, with at least a little bit more certainty that conclusions are valid from this point forward because we are in this situation. Now, how do we do this then? I'm just wondering if I've, I've learned anything else from the rest of these clues somehow. I mean, for example, this square now can't be, it can't be six, one, two, it can only be five. I'm actually going to put that in. That square, one, two, three, four, five, that could be, two, three, four, that could be five. Um... Are we learning anything else? Ah, yeah, aren't we getting this digit? Yes! Oh, that's beautiful. I've got another digit. I'm so ex I'm sorry to be so excited about this, but I, I, I've only just appreciated the fact that I know that the four can't be hypothecated off because in this row, we know the minimum clump size is a 12. Um, means, and means the four must join to this square because four is not equal to 12 yet means that that square is a one. So that's a two. And now I get more clumpage. So that's that's the start of a clump. Okay. <laughs> Probably doesn't do anything, but that was that was very exciting for a moment. I've now got a grand total of six digits in the grid. I have a horrible feeling as well that as I've been thinking about this square, that there is some, you know, there's some sort of unifying theory of the universe that had I, that if I could see it, if I could see the way to think about that square, I could instantly know how it worked. Um, I very much do not feel that I have identified the unifying theory of the universe. I feel that, I feel like, I feel like the answer is just out of reach. It's like, I can't quite, it's like a, I don't know, something very, very slippery that you, you keep trying to grasp and it keeps, the harder you grasp it, the more it slips away. Um, anyway, that's by the by. Can we now, so we know that this, this is 42. We know that I don't think I know that this this one joins up with the, the four because if that was eight say then we could have a clump of 15 here and a clump of 15 here although I suppose we couldn't do that because we know that the middle cell isn't part of a 15 uh, a 15 clump horizontally so hmm, does that mean something let's give this its own color for a moment so this square not part of a 15 clump either that way or that way um, But the, again, I might, it might be worth reiterating the thinking, mightn't it? So this three provides the maximum number I can add to green in a vertical direction. And that, that could be added 
it could be those two squares for example if they could be a, they can't actually be a one two pair graph it's very interesting the number of things that can't be a one two pair or right, those two squares they could be both green they could be a one two pair i think and that would be the sort of outies for this for the clumps in this row let's make both of those green make them a one two pair just so we can think about it now Ah, uh, the problem is with that one. It's really interesting, this. It is really interesting, because now I'm realising that when... But by doing that... I've sort of taken away some of the potency of this. It's weird. This makes it impossible. Oh, I, I, the thing I'm trying to grasp, I almost grasped it then. Because to meet this one's three, I've plonked some stuff here, which adds up to three, but I've, I've, I've used in doing that, I allocated this square to outside of this column, and therefore this contributes to this total of outies. And the problem I foresee, I foresee with that is that now now I'm not allowed to have anything else in any of these squares. All of these squares are obviously all of, for example, that all of those squares are out of bounds for any growth in this. And the reason is that this three has had its allocation fully given to it. So I can't come here and put, make that square anything because that's gonna break the maximum bound on this. But that means that when this grows, when green grows, it grows into one of those squares. But in the way it grows now, you can see, is, is a minimum of five. Therefore, I think I might be able to conclude something really profound. But, but, and the, the, reason this, the reason you can't put five in there is, is, let's say you make that one green and you make it five. The problem now is that this is capping out the green cells that you can put outside of column five. And that adds up to a maximum of five, and this adds up to a max minimum of six. So it's, it's imbalanced. So in fact, what I'm now thinking is that it's not possible. It's really interesting. It's absolutely fascinating, this. But, but this is huge, I think. Because I am now concluding that the three that is the maximum allocation of vertical digits apply, applied to this green, and we can't put three into either of those squares. It's impossible because of the three here. So to grow this outside, which we know, and we know it must grow into one of those squares at least, And, we, and this can't, we, they can't both grow. We can't have a one, two pair there because that's going to break that. So you can't grow in two directions. So you grow in one direction. Let's say it grows there. And then you've got a decision. Well, we've just proved. We know this square cannot be. It cannot be higher than three. It cannot be equal to three. So it is one or two. And I've just proved, well, now it can't extend here because of this one, two, and it can't extend into either of those because it eats into this chunk. So, so actually, you can't allocate all of the three to the middle thing, which is weird. Oh, because now if it is, if that is true, how do I get to 15 in the clump is now suddenly what I'm worried about. So green has to grow 
in at least one of these, it, it grows into at least one of these squares. We haven't eaten into our allocation now, so we could have a, um, we could have a five in one of those squares if that was a two. But that, that would make that a one, and that would be a nine then. That would actually balance. Let me just mull this for another moment or two. Sorry. So I cannot take... So, I mean, it might be worth me doing this. I, I, I literally want to really focus my attention. So those squares all turn black in this. Obviously, this one, two could be there. But I think I have now convinced myself that the verticality, the vertical green digit is not able to be three and it cannot be a one, two pair. So it is a solitary one or two in either this square or this square. Now, that means that for this to grow and reach a clump size of nine, I can allocate a maximum of five and a minimum of four into these squares. Well, actually, I can see four. I, I can't allocate four anyway. How, how could I ever allocate four? Even in pieces, I can't do it. I can't do a one three pair and I can't do a four on its own. It's just impossible. So actually, I must be allocating now, if this was a, f if the, well, so that's proving this is a two, I think, which proves that there is a one in one of those squares, possibly this one in this iteration. So that's not a one. Now, that means, so, it, right, I see. So now, how could I, how can I allocate green squares to this row to add up to five? Well, we can't do two, three, and we can't do one, four. So we, we have got a five in one of these squares. And now you can see because the one is the digit that's joining and the five is the digit that's joining, this is a nine. That is absolutely absurd. Now, what on earth does that mean? That's taken me an hour and 20 minutes to get that. Um, I don't know is the, is the, is the brutal answer. I'm very, I'm very concerned. I, I don't want, I don't think I want to keep that in. I, what I want to do is to indicate that green is growing in one of these directions and green is growing in one of these directions. So green is of size three altogether and it's something like this or that or that. It's one of those four four shapes. Uh, this is, let's get rid of that one too. I know there's a one joining to green in one of those and a five joining to green in one of these. And Oh, this is gorgeous. I know how to do this. I know how to do this because then th this square, what on earth is this? Ah, this is it. I've done it. I've done it. I've broken into it. Right. Because now let's just highlight this cell. Uh, I'm going to make it blue. Um, in this column, the clumps are now there's a 9-1 clump somewhere, which adds up to 10. And that means because this is 5 being deducted from 45, 40 minus the 10 that's the green clump is 30 for two clumps. And that means anything else in this column is part of a 15 clump. And that square needs to be part of a 15 clump that's not green. So it must take this square. And that knocks this square up. That has to be a 1. And that tells us where green goes. That square is uh, blue, it's not one. This is a, a valid clump division. That is a valid clump division. These three squares add up to um, uh, 15 actually, don't they? They add up to 15 because we've got a 10 clump and two 15 clumps in the column. So they add up to 15, they can be hypothecated. 
I'm going to just draw in that boundary so that I feel like I'm not missing a trick. Now, these two squares add up to 15 and they don't involve a 9, so they're a 7 8 pair. Oh, this is so exciting now. Um, these squares are a 5 6 pair. Let's get rid of the red line. I don't quite know what that means yet. Well, it means one more thing here. That's not five. This is two, three, or four. This one is seeing that square, so that's a two. So this isn't two. This is three or four now. This is two. So, oh, okay. So I can draw another red line here. I don't know whether that joins this. This one joins up to this one. Um. I do know that these aren't in the same clump, so I can make that a valid line segment now. I don't know whether that goes over there. If that, if that stays there, then this square or this domino and this domino would be um, six, seven, eight, and nine. And these squares would be one, two, three, four, and five and could be clumped, but needn't be clumped, I think. Oh, yeah, they, well, hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe that's a valid line segment and that would be a clump. I don't know. Um, okay. Okay, but that's that's I feel very, very, very enthused about this now. So okay, what what are we saying? What are we saying exactly is going on in this row? We know that we've got a 14 clump. So again, we've got 42's worth of clumpage here, and there's a 14. Didn't we work out, didn't I work out that you couldn't have three 14's? You can't have three 14's, because you need to allocate ones outside of the row three times, and you can't put three ones into row four and row six. So this is a 14 clump, and there must be a 15 clump and a 13 clump in this row. Therefore, this square, it's definitely, an, well, this is definitely a clump. But I don't know if it goes there as well. And I don't know what it adds up to. That's, that's an immense, immensely bobbins worthy thing to note. Okay, those three are in the same clump. That must be true, because we know that we know that this can only be it's only allowed to have five because it's and it's got it. So these are all one clump. But again, we don't know whether that's part of orange or not. These add up to five. So if this was the 15 clump in this row, we'd have to take that square as well. But if this is the 15 clump, we don't know. It could be two or three. What about this? Ah, okay, well we can draw that boundary in, can't we? So this is three or four. Okay, this square's not two. Oh, that's annoying as well. So this, I was wondering whether I could draw the boundary here. But actually, we've now, we now know that there are, t there's two vertical. Yeah, and it is actually a two in this row. This, in, this is interesting. So in this row, the clumps are adding to 42, which means we can add on three. This is the whole thing we've been thinking about. We've already added on one. So we're, we're, we're allowed to add on two more, but we know we're not adding two ones because they would have to be, well, they'd have to be in row four and row six, and we can't do that. So we're adding on a two, which could be this two. So it's possible that's a clump. Or, yeah, or well, the 
there's a two maybe in one of those squares that's being added on to orange. Hang on. There's something odd about that. Um, hmm. let me think about this. Hang on. <laughs> Sorry, I, that was a really long pause, wasn't it? I'm just trying to understand something. <laughs> I've had a thought and I don't understand what it means. And that's not a good thing, situation to be in. It really isn't. So I've done it again. I'm still I'm still mulling over my thought. Okay, I'll try and articulate this. I have I've not even remotely got to the end of this thought this thought process though, so it's probably it's probably going to sound like gibberish, but here is my thought. Imagine that we drew a line across the grid here. Well, we don't have to imagine it. I just did it. The thing is actually I, I, I'm going to just I don't want to overlap with anything I've actually put in the grid. No, there are, I actually haven't put anything in the grid there, so that I can make that line and then remove it just by redoing it. Now, obviously, uh, everything above that line is four complete rows of the Sudoku. And therefore, four complete rows can be divided into clumps, exactly, with no remainder because obviously each each 45's worth of row is three clumps worth of things. So these four rows altogether could be divided into a, a perfect number of clumps. If nothing, if, if, there, if there were no clumps from the bottom of the grid that stuck into the top of the grid at all, that would be fine. We could, the mathematics of that would be fine, wouldn't it? But the mathematics of that are not fine here because we have got we've got interloping clumpage in the form of this cell and perhaps this cell. But no more than that, it's not possible for there to be more interlopers than a one, which is this one, and that is definitely an interloper. And possibly a two. Now here's my thought about that. Let's imagine that the two is not in, the two that must belong to one of these clumps and not the green one. The two, let's imagine the two was here and belonged to orange. Well, then the only interloper at the top of the grid would be a one. So how could we, how could we correct the count, if you like? How could we ensure that the top of the, all the clumps in the top of the grid divided exactly into 15s? And the, the point is that we're 14, we're 14 short in a way. And that's fine, we can be 14 short because there is a way that the bottom of the grid can lend us that 14 and it would have to. And it could lend us it through this, this, this one's clump, except that this is a three. So the maximum number of, 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 of digits that we could attach to this three in the top of the grid would be 12's worth of digits. And 12 plus 1 is 13. It's not 15. 
So the remainder of the cells at the top couldn't be 0 mod 15. They just couldn't be. And I think what that means is that actually we do have to. We do have to have a 2 interloping from row 5 into the, to into the top half of the grid, which could be this 2. Oh, no, it is this two, actually, because it can't. Well, because because it's only a two, it can't go there and attach to orange. So it is this two, for this is the only two in row four. There you go. So that's got to be an interloper. And, and that means we've now got interlopers worth three. Well, the only way we can correct the count is if there are more interlopers that valued that are valued at 12. And we can do this now. Because this one's clump, let's make that red, can spill into the top of the grid. And it can take, well, that can't be 12 on its own. It can take this square. It can't take yellow, because yellow we know is different from red. And I don't think it can go here, because of this barrier. So in fact, this is absolutely extraordinary. Oops. So in fact, I think what we learn is that these add up to 12, which adds up to that. So that is a complete, that is a complete clump. This two can't extend any further because we can't add on more than two because we've, we've allocated all three of our outies now in the form of this and this. So in fact, that is forced to be finished. And that tells us that that's green. Good grief. And that there's a five, therefore. This is not five. That is, gives us another clump. Uh, let's get rid of the, the black line now. We don't need that anymore. We now know that this must be orange by a process of elimination. We also know that they add up to 13. So this is the 15 clump. And if this is 13, it can't be 5, 8 or 4, 9. That is 6, 7. And this is eight and something, eight and two. And that adds up to 15 and is a clump. There we go. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Yes, it is. Now, these squares are a 4-8 pair, I'm going to allege now, because they can't be 5-7, they can't be 3-9. And that means this is a 3. Oh, Jay, you have outdone yourself. Look, there's a clump forming here. That cell's not, not part of a clump, so it must go up a bit. Um, okay. Oh. Oh, I might miss something here. Look, I didn't spot this before. But if this this clump did go into this square, that would be this square would be have to be a fifteen on its own. Well, that's not right. So that is that is its own clump. This is well, no, this is fine. This is absolutely fine because now now we can see that this square or this domino and this domino each add up to fifteen. So these are six, seven, eight, and nine. And now this, well, these squares are all from one, two, three, four, and five. And you can see that actually this does join up to this, therefore, because it's not 15 on its own. And then it must take this square to get to 15. And then it will have got to 15. So there is a T pentomino of clumpage in box one, which we can delineate. And therefore we're left with, I think all four of those now have to be in a clump because we can't isolate less, you know, we can't make this, this a domino there add up to, we can make that add up to 15, but three and 12 is not gonna work. So I think all of that is a clump as well. And therefore, I'm actually going to go full Goodliff on this. I'm not proud when it comes to desperate, desperation stakes which I'm very much in when it comes to this puzzle um, no okay there is there is a three by Sudoku up here 
Now, hang on, what are those squares? They are 1, 5, 9. 1, 5 and 9 add up to 15. So, can we assume that that is a clump? That's probably not a valid assumption, is it? Um, okay. Okay. This is so exciting now. <laughs> Imagine if it's still rock hard and I can't do it. Um, I'll be, I, I will probably cry when no one will see the video then. Um, that's got to be six, sevens, eights and nines. So that's domino has to add up to 15. I don't know where to look. Um, I almost need a way to tick off clumps. Um, oh, I suddenly thought that can't be right, but that's fine, isn't it? Because this three is seeing its own clump. It's just extended vertically. One, two, three, at least four. So this is this is now, well, four, five, six, maybe it could be seven. Two, three, four, five, no, six. Six is the maximum. That can't be one because that would imply six cells are in the same clump. So that's a three, four, or a five. Five, yeah, five, five probably is possible. Um, okay, where's the next win? Where, where can we, where can we earn another breakthrough here? I don't know. Uh, maybe, can I do maths on this? Is that a silly thought? Might be. Uh, let's just see though. So, okay, these three squares add up to 12. And we can't avail ourselves of 4, 5 or 6 in this 12 sum, can we? Now, 9, 1, 2, I can see might work. 8, 1, 3 wouldn't work. If we used 7... We couldn't use one four or two three. So this must be nine one two. Okay, well that's better. That's a deduction at least. So these squares must be three eight and three four eight, is it? No. Oh, hang on. Hang on. What have I done wrong? What have I done wrong? By Sudoku, these are three oh three seven and eight. I suppose they don't all have to be clumped. That's 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 why that might be possible. Ah, but if that's 3, 7 and 8, that's 2, that's 8. So that's not 8, so that's not 7. Let's, let's give that its own colour. <laughs> Just to make me feel better, then make that give that its own colour as well. Um, right. I don't know what that means. I don't really even have a good feeling for where I'm meant to look next. Could it be two, as in one of those squares? Could it be Sudoku? I mean, that is very possible, obviously. Um, maybe I've got to pencil mark everything to death. Let's try that. Five, six, seven, nine. Five, six, seven, nine. Now, what's that one? That can't be nine or five. So that is six or seven, and that is a naked single. Okay, so that was helpful. Is that really true? Seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, seems to be. So that's a naked single. Okay, well, that's great. Okay, so that gives us a six. Now these squares we know are 4, 7 and 8. Can we do, yes, we can give a little bit more Sudoku, so that's a 4. And now we need 2, 3 and 6 over here. And we know that that's not 2. 5, 7 and 9, so there's got to be some splittage along here. These are very big numbers. And in this column, we've not placed 1, 5, and 9. So these are 1, 5, and 9. Oh, they add up to 15 again. Yeah, the useful thing here... 
Ah, which I can do, of course. Right, here's something I hadn't appreciated, but I now... I think I did, I had appreciated it, but I hadn't appreciated it late, uh, latterly in this magnum opus edition. Um, so if we look down here, what, what are these? Well, this four sees one, two, three. So these can't be split up. They are in their own clump. Now that I think is interesting. No, ah, oh, it's not actually. You rotten, rotten puzzle. Well, I was, I was, what I was trying to do was to think about these squares. Now, obviously, I know those are zero mod. There's zero mod 15, because that box must be zero mod 15, and those add up to 15. What about those? That, that, they also add up to 15, actually. Okay, so how could... How could we... How could this little domino, how could we make that red, is my question. Because if we do that, what's left here is now not capable of being divided into clumps. And the only, you know, it would be perfectly possible for this to be red if this wasn't red and we could, we could subtract coming through there in the same way. But we can't do that. So there is no way. So in fact, what we can do, I think, is that. And that feels like a bit of a breakthrough. Maybe. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Oh, here's a little thought. Where's two in this box? It seems to have to be here. So this isn't big enough to be a clump, is it? And, okay. Oh, I tell you what, this four has become more useful as well. So that's a clump, and that must be separated from this clump. And this clump here has a two in it, so it's not big enough yet. So it must grow a bit bigger. So this is all one clump. This isn't big enough to be 15, so it must grow. It's still not big enough, and it can't join to what's below it. So it does join there, and that is a clump. Whoa, great. That is absolutely beautiful. Literally every deduction I get in this puzzle is is just wonderful to me. Now, what's that done to the world? The answer is I don't know. I'm going to colour that in. And stare. <laughs> can I do can I do any Sudoku in the top top left of the grid? How can that be nine? That's that's this is restricted. Uh, one, two, hang on, one, two, three, four, five, six is the maximum. Hang on, that would give me a digit here. One, two, three, four, five, it must be six. Oh, huge. So that's nine. This is not six, nine. Sorry, that's probably been available for ages, but you have to, well, you don't have to do anything, but I hope you'll forgive me for finding this puzzle quite challenging. And I'm trying to juggle a reasonable number of things here in my poor old brain um ah, what's that doing four comes out of here so i need to put eight somewhere in this column so eight is in one of two places now i bet i bet there's some way you can do this seven eight here Um, this six is interesting because the only way I could get to six is by clumping each one of these cells in a different clump, which probably is important somehow. Two here. Five or six here. We've already got three accounted for. So there's got to be at least a split above well these three here have to be s split into at least two clumps and pregnant pause while i try and work out what on earth this means is three restricted in box seven no i don't think so it we could be worrying about 
Um, <laughs> that's not nice. Oh, that's a naked single. Sorry, you didn't spot that either, but that's great. That's not a one anymore. Six in this row. Look, oh, this is doing it. Yeah, okay, Sudoku is being friendly for once. Thank you, Sudoku. Six is here. What about below it? If there was a six here, that would be six. Would, there, would we care? Not really. I don't think so, anyway. What about if there was a six here? Then then we, then we, that would be seven, eight. We'd know the order. That would give me an eight here. That would give me an eight here. And an eight there. Two sevens here. Okay, and we're, we're on a bifurcatory chain. We don't like entering bifurcatory chains. We like doing logical things. But where? Oh, we've got a three here. What's that doing? We've got one. So we've got to split these up. The nine in this row. Well, couldn't the nine just join to the six and make a clump? The nine and the seven can't be in a clump. Oh, here's a, here's a very s s simple thought. This six must join up to a, a one cell at least. In fact, it must join up to exactly to one cell. Because if the six didn't, if we just did that, then all those would be in a clump and they would add up to 21. And 21 is more than 15, knowledge bomb. So we have to draw this line in. And now this can't be a nine seven pair or it would add up to 16. So this must have five in it, which means this isn't five. And now, this is beautiful actually, good grief. Okay, how could this be seven? And you might say that's fine, it's not yet reached its, its, its quantum. Yeah, it hasn't reached its quantum, but it needs a two from somewhere now, and it can't get that two, and that's not a two, so it can't work. So that is nine, and that is a clump. We've just discovered a new clump out of nowhere. This now is five seven ah, and it can't get that two so that means there's a three in one of those squares in order to complete this clump because it can't be a one two pair and that means that is not a three and it means oh it means these aren't three either actually so the this is part of a single clump let's give that yellowification joining to one of those digits to make a clump Okay, so what what did we get from this? We got there. We got what did we what what did we actually get from that? Remarkably little. Is that possibly the the answer? Ah, what's that digit? That can't be a one. It's already seeing it's already seeing three clumps at least. It's four or five. One, two. Three. So there's there's some splittage going on across there. Um, seven is in one of those squares. This was a five six pair that would be a five five down here seven I'm not seeing anything clever I'm sorry if you are and you're getting cross with me um, nine is in one of those squares could be a six nine pair couldn't it in either of those positions possibly um, okay I'm not really sure what to do now. One. Is there something? Maybe that square's under a bit of pressure. One, two, three, four, five. It's at least six, isn't it? I'm not sure if it can be six, but it is at least six. So that is six, seven, or nine. It can't be eight by Sudoku. So that, no, it's not. I thought it was going to be a triple. It's not. It's not, it's nearly, if that was a seven, this would be a six, nine pair, which would break the world. 
That's weird as a deduction. Okay, I don't think that can be true. So what I'm saying is if that's 7, because this becomes a 6-9 pair, but that also has to add to 15, that would be a 6-9. So we'd all, square, all of those squares would be 6 and 9. So I think we have to do that. I have a horrible feeling that's not going to do anything. I mean, okay, yeah, one way of thinking about that then is to say, that, that oh, this can't be 9. There can't be 9 cells above it, so it's not 9. So it is 6 or 7. So there's a virtual 6-7 pair between the fact there must be a 6-7 in this domino and this square. So that can't be a 6. We know there's a 7 in this, this domino, so we now know... Ah, it doesn't do anything. We now know there's a 7 up here, believe it or not, by Sudoku. Which possibly would be interesting if we could... So hang on. Now, there's a 7 in one of these. If, if this is 7, we know this is 8. That would put an 8 up there, which is making a... Oh, it looks like an absolute festival of 7-8 pairs. Goodness only knows how they get disambiguated. Um... But if this was 6, 9, that would be 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So there would be some splittage up here. Um, goodness, I don't know. It's complicated, isn't it? It really is complicated. And I'm not, I'm not entirely sure... Well, I'm not sure at all where I'm meant to look, actually. Um, let's let's pencil mark these digits in the hope that, that yields something. Four, six, seven, eight. So they're all quite big, aren't they? And we've got five here. So we could have two, three, four, six, or something like that. Although that would look that would also no, that would be fine. Because oddly, that's not a deadly pattern because of what's happened in column five. Um, what if... if oh, it's, uh, I don't know. I don't know how to think about this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Five is possible, I think. See, if I could get rid of three here, that would be useful. I have a four, five pair in this column. So why can't this be three? To be three, is it possible all four of those are in, in the same clump? It might just be possible. It must be very close to not being possible, but I'm not certain. This is 3, 4, or 5. This is 3. So 1, 2, 3. So this has to join to something, and this has to join to something. If this joins upwards... Okay, that makes sense. If it goes downwards, I don't know. I'm not thinking about this in in the in a way that is clear. Am I? I'm I'm being a bit slow. I think. Um, four or five. One, two, three. I'm also conscious, actually, of the fact that literally one digit here can, you know, if you if you knew, you know, if you knew this was a seven, one, two, three, four, five. I sort of feel like that would well, it would do lots of things. It would correct this this count, and you could you could instantly make quite a bit of progress. 
Oh, that's a funny noise from my hard drive. That's a terrifying thing. Imagine if I lost this video. I think, again, I would cry. You'd never see it, but I would cry. Um, okay, so what on earth am I meant to do here? Nine is in some set. Can that be nine? If this is nine, that's six. This is seven, eight. So can we put nine and six there? We'll put five in the corner. You can see here, that will make this a one. Do all sorts of things. The other thought, which is a bit of a worry, is that I could just have missed one of these arrows. Because as the grid gets busier and busier, it's very easy to overlook something somewhere. Um, so maybe I've got to just audit the arrow. I mean, I have... I'm aware this is a two. I don't know what to do with it because I don't know whether it joins to this square. That being a six, I have delineated fully. So that's dealt with. And then this, we've got a four or five in this row. One, two. I think I've thought about this. I know there's a three poking down, don't I? And that's an isolated three. So that accounts for one, one of this one's count so one two and whichever one of these is three so if that's the three then this count is five for sure and this would join to this boom like that and do we care about that not re not really i don't think I'm not sure. Really not sure. Um, but I do think there might be some pressure. If that was the three, then can all three of those be in the same clump? Maybe that's a question we could ask. We'd have to push the seven here for that to be true. This square itself So in order for this to be a four, let's just think about that. For this to be a four, one, two, the three is the third one. So if this is three now, this digit couldn't be one, two, three, or four. So it would be a minimum of five. We couldn't take a three, could we? because the threes are being hypothecated to this. But why couldn't one of these be a one? Five. I don't think it works, but I'm not sure actually. Oh no, actually, I think it might work with eight, six. No, we can't use the six. I mean, this is very complicated. Again, it's very complicated. So what I'm, I'm trying to work out is if this is four, this can't be the three. I'm very comfortable with that. So this would be the three. And these all have to be a single clump. With this digit being a minimum of five. Now, it couldn't be seven. So it would be because because it would join to this and if we're trying to join that in as well it would be too big. So it would be five only. That's the, literally the only thing it can be. So we couldn't go seven five because we could this couldn't be a one or a two. Uh, well we couldn't make a one two pair out of this because the two is not available. So we'd have to go eight five and then we need a two and it doesn't work. That's really really complicated. Uh, and I'm not sure it's going to do a great deal. But what it does do is it does prove that this is a 5. And that means that's a 3 for what that's worth. Which is probably not much. But let's, let's keep our fingers crossed it does something. So now I get a 1, 2, 4 triple here. I get a 5, 6 pair in the corner up there. No, I don't actually. Is that right? No, I don't. I get a five in the corner and a six here. Oh, that's big. So that's seven and that's nine. 
which means this is six which means this is six okay we've got a we've got a tiny breakthrough here now three is aligning look in these squares so three in this column is in one of two places um now what does all that mean i have no idea yet but but suddenly i'm filled with hope again please <laughs> please just don't peter out <laughs> it would be very kind of you not to peter out <laughs> um what does it mean come on simon I don't know. I've got a still. No, I don't even have to. Nine in this row is in one of two places. I wonder if that can be a nine. If that's a nine, that's a three. This nine has to get out. So this would have to be a one. And that might be possible. Not sure. Um, Golly gosh. And this being a five, I mean, has that really improved the world, a lot in the world? Is that somehow important? If that's a three, these are all in the same clump. And yeah, there may be one nine is the only way that works. I'm not sure. It's not, I'm not clear about that. I think I'm going to pencil mark this column fully. I need ones, twos, threes and fours into it. And let's just see if we can get rid of anything from, from these squares. I, oh, good Lord, maybe we can't look. That can't be three apparently because of this three pencil mark. Neither of them can be two. This one, that can't be three by the logic about the threes. So it's a very low digit. Um, doesn't necessarily matter. Yeah, that was really under <laughs> that was really underwhelming, wasn't it? Uh, nine is in it. Nine is in one of those squares. Does that mean it has to join here? I think it does. Either the nine is here. That's one possibility, or the nine's here, that's a three, and then nine has to get out. Right, so this is, oh, this is big. I think this is huge. I'm just going to double check that logic, though. Okay, so my thought is, if this is nine, this is three, and then that's a clump, this nine has to get out, joins up with this, so that would be nine, one, five. If this is nine, ah, oh, the one could go there. Oh, you rotten thing. Well, this is this is nine one five. Does that matter? Uh, it means that can't be a one, I suppose, because the one is either here or here. Here, yeah, that maybe that's the way to think about it. So, if this is nine, this is one, and if this is nine. No, the one could be in either position. So the one is in one of those three positions. And that is much less helpful, isn't it? So this being three or four, has that helped with anything? So we now know two is in one of those squares. But I think we've known that for ages from this two domino thing going on down here. Uh, okay, wow. Oh, maybe the seven here helps now. One, two, three, four, five. So I've only had five. So there's got to be some delineation up here, hasn't there? How could that work? So if this is three... Then you have to delineate the six from this one four. If this is not three and this is three, we know this is nine, this is one, and we still have to delineate the six. So that six is hypothecated off and joins up with its friend here, the two. 
and they add up to eight, so they're probably going to join to a seven, but the seven could be in either of these positions. Good grief. Good grief, this is complicated. So, so one, two, three, four, five, six. And is it is it possible these are in the same clump? I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think that is possible, actually. Because if these were in the same clump, they can't join to this. And they can't join to this, because we know this is a 915 clump. And, yeah, you couldn't get the three out. So these are also in different clumps. Which is making me think... Is this interacting somehow with this five clue then? This is still monstrously difficult. I mean, it's... <laughs> It's, it feels very harsh that this is... I, it makes me think I'm missing something very obvious. Um, if, if if this puzzle could ever be described as containing anything obvious at all. Um, two hours, ten minutes. I mean, I don't think I'm anywhere near finishing this either. Because the other thing I'm conscious of is that even if I can resolve what's going on up here, there's almost four different puzzles, or three different puzzles left. There's this puzzle, this puzzle, and this puzzle. And obviously there is a mild amount of interdependence between them, but it really it really feels hard to understand. Um, okay. This is a five. One, two... What does that mean? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, if this was 9, 1, is there some problem with that? This would be 2, this would be 4. This would have to be three, seven, or eight. And that might be fine, I don't know. If this, if it goes down here, this is five, one, nine. We need two, three, and eight in the column. Is there a reason this can't be eight, perhaps? I don't think so, but... Again, I'm not sure. Um, is it reason? Maybe it's reasonable now to argue that no. We know this is. We know there's a nine up here. Can there actually be an eight up here as well? Now they can't, can there? If that's three, we know that's nine and that's one. If this is eight, that's three. Yeah, that you can't put eight up here. So eight is right. So there's a seven eight pair in this box. I hadn't appreciated that at all. Now that's actually really surprising though, because now we've got this horrible collection of nonsenses at the top. How on earth are we going to make that work? Um well, that is a good question. So if those two join together, they are a clump. And that wouldn't work, would it? Because we'd be left with this as a combination, and that would have to add up to two lots of... So it would have to add up to 30, and it clearly doesn't. It adds up to 26, by my reckoning. So these two are not joined together, which means I can do another line there. Now, well, that feels oh, it feels very difficult now. I'm wondering about this square. I mean, obviously, that looks like quite a natural clump to me. So maybe we can disprove that. If we do that, how does that work with the world? That... No, no, that's, that, that doesn't work either. Because because if you do this, how do you get this out? 
you could go there but then you can't take another cell because it will it, whatever the next cell is it will be too big so you have to hypothecate that off which means this is seven eight this is three but but that's going to join to the two six and that's going to give you an 11 count with this to come so that tells us that these two do join up and that gives us another tiny deduction uh, so my five is now one two three which means these two are hypothecated off. There's probably been a way to see that more clearly forever, but I, I just didn't see it. Now this, we know there's a, we know that this is now a clump, and one of them is a nine. So this is a one nine pair. Um, I don't know if that's doing more than that. It might be. Well, it's giving me a four here. Hopefully, hopefully the rest of this can be disambiguated into stuff that works. I'm not at all confident about that yet, but. I think logically what I've what I've said felt right when I said it so hopefully it's not a total dog's breakfast now these two are the same but they can't join to this I don't think because of this clue so now well now what on earth is going on oh I see no it works it does work it does thank goodness for that so this has to take an extra clump which is there and you can see now that this is on an is it's an 11 or 12 count so it has to take a three in this square and that's fine because now this is eight and that can take a seven there so that becomes seven that becomes seven that becomes eight that becomes eight that becomes seven that becomes eight and this is a clump that becomes blue this is a clump that can be i don't know should we make it gray um we can delineate everything and please please do something please just finish <laughs> um oh, no it's not going to is it i mean the four's getting the four is getting placed up here so maybe that does something four four there's a four in one of these three squares but we've got no four information okay this column must be where it's at three four and five to place okay so perhaps that does something three four five so that's not four. Oh, i don't know what i just did then i want to take four out of there the three ah the three is doing work three two one two goes here by sudoku this is an eight in the corner oh so we've got a clump in the bottom right well that's good i think that is good i think any any progress is, is worth it isn't it literally any progress is worth it um it looks to me and i might be wrong about this that the top is only going to get disambiguated by learning about ones and twos down here so this square is not a one anymore I mean, the irony here is that could be a clump and that could be a clump. I'm not sure whether we can mix these up a bit or not. I mean, these are in different. There's only two clumps here, isn't there, to find. And these are in different clumps. So let's label them and see what that, what, what that tells us. Now, does it tell us anything profound? I mean, for example, does it tell us that this can't be green if that's green we can't repeat the one it's too big this would be a five nine pair so this cannot be green and must be gray so that's all gray uh, but here's the question is it possible that that is a five gray one, two and this would be a three four pair and that would be a five i don't believe it it is possible i think I might be wrong about that, but that might be possible. So this could either bend round here and take this one, or that's a clump and that's a clump. And how does that affect it? Oh, I see it affects this clue, does it? One, two. Can, there, can this still be five? One, two three for this to be five maybe that has to be in a different clump to this one two three four five oh, maybe it can good grief okay that can't be nine i've just seen 
Does that affect all the logic I just thought about before? If that's a clump, this is free flowing. If this if this is a clump, that's the five, that's the one, that's the nine. That would be a five. I'm so sorry. I'm so I'm, I know I'm inept. I'm just I'm so I'm just feel awful now about two hours twenty minutes of your time I've spent on this. Um, okay. Uh, what? <laughs> Where? How? Um. So I've still got, I mean, what, what am I meant to do here? Is there a way, if that's five, if that's five, that's one, this is three or four just don't see how I meant to do this. Uh, what about two then? So two, two. There is a two in one of those two squares. I mean, that's just so, it's just nowhere near enough to understand what's going on. That can't be six because of this six. Um, I think probably, oh, five, oh no, that can't be five. I've just found a, a reason. Ah, this is three or four then. That, f well, does that do something? One, three, four. Oh, hang on. That, that's a naked, uh, that is naked. That can't be one. Okay. All right. That's just ineptitude on my part. Forgive that. So now we've got three, four and eight down here, but it's still, that's not three. Um, so how do we do that? This could join up with the one five nines, couldn't it? And it would be quite happy. That would force this down here. But it, I mean that, like these could still be in a, a clump, I think. Okay, this being three or four, does that mean that what were the we thought that so if this is not red that would be one two three these would have to be in the same clump and that would mean these were green and this would be a one five nine triple five one nine here uh, I don't know if that's fine or not probably is but But if this is, if this is red, then we're only at a count of two and either these could be the same or different. Maybe it's the two somehow here. Is this somehow, that's always green actually. Let's just put that in while I think of it. Is there some way I'm meant to appreciate where the, where the divider is along here? Ah, three, four, five, six. Good grief, you're kidding me. It's a, it's a quadruple in the bottom row. Three, four, five, six. Okay, so that's not five. And we've got a one, I think we've got a one nine pair. Ah, actually that's not seven I've just seen. So this is a one or a nine. Of course it is. <laughs> and it's not seen by anything. It really isn't. So if that was two, then we'd, then we'd know this would be seven. That would probably fill a load of things in. I mean, if that's nine, what does it join up to? The thing is, it could join up to things. It wouldn't be that difficult for it to do that. 
And this three, four, five, six quadruple is very disparate. You know, all the digits are used in box seven. So you can't even lock one digit into this box from that logic. It just doesn't work. Which is weird, actually. Okay. So if that's four, what are we then saying? One, two, three, four. I don't know. I'm not even sure that I know. I mean, obviously, that's a four, six pair. That could join to the two, three. So that could be a very, very reliable clump, couldn't it? And if it's three, then this is a three. This would be red. I don't know. I think I think my problem here is I'm focusing on the wrong cells and I don't I don't really understand why. Apart from, you know, I obviously am not not getting something that's crucial. One, two, five, nine. So six in this column is in one of two places. Is that useful? I don't think so. Which way does this join? Which way does this join? I mean, how, how are these easy questions to answer? Uh, I'm just I'm just not understanding it. It's devastating. This is just devastating to me. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for myself, actually, because I've spent a long time on this. I, I was about an hour and a half ago. I got what I thought was the break in, but I'm still completely nonplussed by it. I just I can't quite see how to. I can't see where I'm meant to be focusing. Oh, is that my phone going again? Let me just check. That's OK. That's all right. Um, three. If this was six, is that doing something profound? I mean, obviously, that's a load of barriers we're going to have there. If this is five. It's definitely one of the hardest puzzles we've ever we've ever tried on the channel. I mean, not just from the length of time it's taken me. It's, it's conceptually incredibly hard to understand, but it's also incredibly hard to finish once you've even understood bits of it. Um, must be, I don't know. I just don't know. <laughs> uh, thing is, I don't really know where to look either. I mean, okay, this square is mildly restricted by Sudoku. That is five, seven or nine. And I managed to type in eight, five, seven, or nine. Okay. So does that do anything? Not to my knowledge. Almost, but not quite. Okay, so this square is one, two, five, or seven. And Don't again. I don't see a way of restricting that particularly. One. One is in the corner somewhere. So I might as well record that in case that triggers um, a thought. Um. Come on, Simon. Let's get rid of that <laughs> in case that helps. It's not going to. Let's get rid of that in case that helps. Um, oh, this. Okay. Sorry. That can't be a three, can it? Um, because it sees this one, and that's different from that one. And those those can't now all be the same. I think that's true. Anyway, oh god. I mean, I say that, but if these were all the same. Um, 
How would that work? Well, the thing is, if these are all the same, this isn't 0 mod 3, so we don't have to add one of those digits into this. And whichever one you pick, you're breaking the bank. So that is not 3, which means this is 3, which means hopefully something. And that means, well, it does mean stuff. That's 4, that's 6. Okay, that, that's given me a tiny bit of hope again. So this is 5 in the corner. That's 5, that's 9. Wouldn't it be great if that was if that was actually, you know, the way that I could get started again? I would be so happy if I can get if I can, you know, reasonably smoothly finish it from there. Okay, that three. I think that this was is it wasn't this determining how this worked. We now can't make a clump from there, so that must be green. That must be grey. And Although, although that's weird, because if that's true, and I don't see why it wouldn't be, the odd thing about that is that this isn't resolved at all. So what's, what's going to resolve it is the position of the 5 here, which is going to be determined by this arrow. 1, 2, 3. Could it be 5, really? You couldn't isolate this. So there would be a barrier here. If this was 5, that would be a barrier. And this is four now. One, two, three. Ah, that's good. So that is that's become red out of nowhere. So that's a that's a. I mean, it does look very much like this is going to be red because that's going to. If that's red, these two are in the same clump. If the, if this if this is not red, these are all in a clump, and that would be a clump that adds to ten, which included. 1, 4, and 5. So you'd have to add 2 and 3 to it. And that's very difficult to do, especially when I've just realised that square is a 3 by Sudoku in this box. Whoa. And that's that's knocked out. So this is now at 8. Come on. So let's let me go back to that thought. The thought was how how could this two if, if there's a barrier here, so these are all in the same clump. Obviously this can't be a nine now, it'll add up to too much. So this is adding up to ten. And I need five more. And I can't take a five and I can't use a one four pair. So I've got to use a two three pair, but orthogonal connections will not get me there. So that's wrong. And if that's oh if that's wrong, this is red, and therefore that is a clump, and we found a new clump, and now this, these two squares are in the same clump, which is probably, I don't know, do we think that's going to be 159 somehow? Probably is, not certain. This 2 clue is now fulfilled. This 5 clue, 1, 2, 3, is not fulfilled at all. Where else have we got clues to? We've got this clue to fulfill, this clue to fulfill. There's probably something looking down the grid somewhere as well. Um, don't know. <laughs> Not sure. We've got an 8 here. I mean, this could still be quite complicated, I think. Um, I'm not sure where the easy win is to figure this out. Let's just check. Four, one, two, three, four. That is right. Okay, good. This one, two. If that was five, that feels very difficult to me. It really does. This would be a barrier. I mean, that could be nine, five, one. That could be three, four, eight. Three, four, eight, seven, eight. That would work. I know exactly what Mr. Goodliffe would do in this situation. Um, but I won't do that, don't worry. Four, five. Where is where's six in this row? It's there, isn't it? I've only just seen that. Okay, is that good? 
Oh no, the six could join up with a nine in its own clump. <laughs> Just instantly complete itself. Um, okay, so we probably have to pencil mark this square. That's, well, actually, it is one, only one or two. So yeah, we should do that, shouldn't we? Um, so if this is nine, either of these could be a one. That would fix everything along here. That would be a five then. Two. I sort of, I feel like the pressure ought to be on this one. Maybe that is a cell we should just focus on just for a second or two. Now, if it did take this square, how would we get it to the right total then? That feels quite difficult to me. Get six. I mean, it, six, 13, no, I mean, if it took this square, let me just think about that. So if it took this square, it's, it's now we're now either on a count of eight or nine. So we need seven more or six more. We can't take this one then. We can't get to the right count. So we'd have to come down here, which would have to be a four now. Oh, hang on, three, no. Oh, we see. No, but these are in different clumps. Oh, these are in different clumps. So I was thinking we'd go one, seven, four, three. But we can't because these are in different clumps. So that doesn't work. So we'd have to go here with a four and then we can't get the right number. Wow. So this is not in the same clump as this, which means this comes down. Now, unfortunately, that doesn't tell us very much because this could still wrap here and take three, four, with eight. Unbelievably. But it does mean that this blue has to take that square. So we're now on a count of six here. But if this was nine, that would complete that. And that could be a six, nine pair clump. And that would be fine. And we'd have one, two, three, four, five. And this would be a five. But if this is seven, Oh, you could even go 7-2. It's quite absurd how many options there are here. It's absolutely absurd. Okay, here is a th final thought then. This square, and probably not a final thought, that square's yellow. That, oh, I'm going to make it yellow. That, that's because it, it, these three can't add up to enough, can they? So this square has to join with this. We, again, we don't, well, maybe this time, maybe this time we can say this can't join here. If this joins here, obviously it's got to go four, eight, and we need three more, which can't be this. We have to go one, two pair. We can't go here because that's part of that. So we have to go one, two pair, and those two can't add up to 15. So we don't take this. So this is seven. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's seven. That's eight. That's four. So we do need the three, and that gives us another clump. Now, that's a clump. Uh, this is now this is still a one two pair after all that that's now a seven that is now a nine and that's a one and that's a five and that's a nine and that's an eight and that's a seven and that's a five and that's a four so <laughs> please please work so the five is saying what one two three so these are in different clumps okay um okay so the six <laughs> all right we need one more don't we from this now if we took it there if we did that to get the one i think this clump is broken so we can't do that we must take it it must go that way round and that does uh, that does all add up. That's absolutely extraordinary. <laughs> so we go one, two, one, two, two, nine, nine, one. <laughs> I am going to clump everything. I'm going to ch check the counts of everything. I'm going to do that at the core. I'm going to do those so I don't miss anything there. These become blue. That becomes a clump all of itself. And that becomes purple and now 
is this five right? One, two, three, four, five. Yes. Is this right? One, two, three, four, five. Yes. I think those were the two I was worried about. That's six, one, two, three, four, five. I don't know. This could be right. I don't even know if the solution is in this. Shall we see? Please. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, Jay, I'm probably giving away big secrets here by saying you need to be working in the security services. Your brain is just ridiculous. It is just ridiculous. Imagine setting that. That is one of the most, it's one of the hardest, most interesting, fascinating puzzles. The break-in, the crux, even the title is so clever. The break-in is, I'm not even sure I've understood, I understood it entirely. I think there may have been, I'm worried there was some global mathematical trick I could do to just find out what that was, but I don't know. I mean, that is simply one of the most brilliant puzzles you will ever solve. I don't know whether this will be on the channel though, because it's too long, two hours, 40 minutes. No one's going to want to watch it. Um, I don't know, the phone's buzzing again. Um, I don't know how you set that. I don't know how you have the con conception and to execute it like that. And then I don't know how you solve the back end with any sort of alacrity. I think I was just not focusing on the right th thought processes and probably under Sudokuing or something, but it was, that is so hard. I'm so relieved to get through it. I've got to turn off the, if, what if there's a power cut now? I can't even bear to think about it. Thank you so much. If you asked, if there is anybody who's ever watched this video, please drop a comment at the bottom, say you did watch the whole thing. I'll be astonished and grateful. Um, thank you so much. And I'm sorry it took me so long. I found it very difficult, very interesting. And I am absolutely, thrilled to have solved it. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments how you got on if you had a go. I enjoy the comments, especially if they're kind. We'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.